All right. So some of you may have seen on the back table, uh, there are notes for Barnabas, as well as on the back of the notes for Barnabas is John Mark, who will be the next one we uh, study in the character studies that we're going to be doing on Wednesday nights. Get one for Jack, Dwayne. Um, so the uh, kind of hopefully design these to be relatively uh, compact, um, especially given the fact that the individuals we're going to be studying, generally speaking, are individuals maybe we don't really read a whole lot about. Okay, Barnabas, there's, there's a fair amount on Barnabas. There's not really all that much on John Mark, uh, but there's going to be other individuals, minor prophets, uh, individuals in the Old Testament like Caleb, for instance, that we're going to cover. Uh, and so hopefully it'll fit within this 15, 16, 17 minute period where we're uh, going to be able to talk and study a little bit. I also included questions on the, on, at the bottom of each section of notes, and I got to thinking that since all of our kids and everyone's going to be in here, this is something we could even prepare for as a family. Uh, so for those of you who want to be able to kind of look over it and study it and maybe talk about the questions together in preparation for like for next Wednesday on John Mark, you, know, you could do that. So I thought that might be interesting to do. Also, for this coming Sunday, uh, the notes for our uh, set for, uh, Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 5 through 8 are also on the back table, so you can get one of those on your way out. I will also email these out to everybody, okay, so that you'll have them in your email as well. Okay, so talking about Barnabas, we have a lot written, obviously, about most of the apostles like Paul and Peter. Well, I say most of, mainly Paul and Peter are the two main ones, certainly uh, the apostle John. Uh, Barnabas, not an apostle, but he was the early companion of Paul. His real name uh, was Joseph, uh, that we know him as Barnabas, uh, and there's a reason why we know him as Barnabas, but his real name is Joseph. That comes from Acts chapter 4 and in verse 36, where we also learn uh, that he was of the tribe of Lephi. Um, and he was from the country of Cyprus. Uh, and of course, Cyprus ends up being kind of an important uh, location given the, that's one of the very first places that Paul and Barnabas go on their missionary journey together, uh, leaving Antioch of Syria. They end up in Cyprus at one point. Uh, and then eventually, uh, how does Cyprus come back into play with Barnabas later? Does anybody remember that? Yeah, in Acts chapter 15, uh, Barnabas takes John Mark and they go to Cyprus where Paul and Silas end up going north into Asia Minor to revisit the churches there. Um, this, is, this is more of a modern map just to kind of give everybody an idea where Cyprus is. Here's Paphos. I think we're probably familiar with Paphos from Acts chapter 13. Uh, but this is Cyprus. And, of course, Damascus is here. Uh, we've got Jerusalem, I thought, was on here, too. Yeah, Jerusalem's down here somewhere, I think. It's not on this map. Anyway, uh, but that's where Cyprus is. And, of course, so as Paul and uh, Barnabas, certainly, as they made their journeys, uh, well, they kind of, there's Tarsus, by the way, uh, but they, they left Antioch of, of Syria, which is somewhere around in here. They went to Cyprus, and they went up to Asia Minor on their first missionary journey. But that gives us an idea of where Cyprus is. So, uh, as we know Barnabas, we know him by the name of uh, Barnabas Barnabas means son of encouragement. And we see this in Acts chapter 4 and in verse 36. In fact, <laughs> the majority of information we have on Barnabas comes from verse 36. Uh, and Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Uh, and, of course, this kind of spurs Acts chapter 5, which helps us to understand some of the things that the brethren were doing uh, to, to help with those who were in need. So, uh, we, as we see there, uh, that uh, he sold a parcel land, gave the money to the apostles for the needs of the saints. Where this land was, if it was in Cyprus and he sold it or had sold it before he came to Jerusalem, or if he had a parcel of land that he owned 
somewhere in Judah, and he sold it and gave it then. Regardless, he gave those proceeds to, uh, to the brethren there in Jerusalem. Uh, and of course, in Acts chapter 5, what does this type of example then spur two individuals to do? Who do we learn about in Acts chapter 5? Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah, and they lie to the Holy Spirit about the, how much they, they gave. Not that that was a problem, it was the fact that they lied. That was the issue. All right, uh, so in Acts chapter 9, so remember Acts chapter 8, Paul is breathing threats, seeking to make chaos of the church of God. And of course, in Acts chapter 8, Paul has an encounter on the road to Damascus with Jesus in a, in a great light. Uh, later in Acts chapter 8, of course, and in, into chapter 9, uh, we find uh, how that Paul then meets up with Ananias in Damascus. He is then baptized and then later ends up coming to Jerusalem where we find in verse 26 of Acts chapter 9 that none of the disciples were fully trusting in Paul's or Saul's change of character or change of mind, I guess you should say, uh, regarding, uh, regarding his, uh, his conversion. In Acts chapter 9 and in verse 26, it says, When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, verse 27. He declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And so he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out. And then, of course, Saul, he speaks boldly in the name of the Lord, verse 29. Uh, so we learn a little bit more about why Barnabas is named Barnabas, son of encouragement. It's not that he was... Uh, gullible or that he was necessarily even easily trusting in others it was the fact that he was willing to give Paul a chance okay he was willing to give Paul Saul the opportunity to take him at his word when he described what had happened and of course Barnabas may have had individual an individual conversation to learn all the details uh, but certainly uh, Barnabas was kind of the one that stuck his neck out so to speak and ultimately led to Paul being uh, uh, accepted, I guess you could say, there in Jerusalem as a member of the Lord's body. Uh, in Acts chapter 11, so between Acts 9 and Acts chapter 11, Paul ends up going back to Tarsus and he stays there for a couple of years. Well, in Acts chapter 11, uh, Barnabas goes to Tarsus and convinces Paul to come to Antioch of Syria to teach to the brethren. Uh, and we find it mentioned there in Acts chapter 11, verses 22 and through, through verse 30, that Barnabas was a good man, that he was full of faith, we're told. Uh, so we see in verse, uh, verse 23, how Barnabas, he came to Antioch, this is Antioch of Syria. When he came, he had seen the grace of God, he was glad, and encouraged them all, that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. And then in verse 25, we see him depart to go seek Saul. It speaks a little bit to uh, Saul's certainly knowledge of, or Barnabas's knowledge of Saul, and the fact that whether, whether Paul or Saul needed that opportunity, perhaps, to come to Antioch and teach to the brethren, or maybe the brethren needed that opportunity to hear from someone who was so well trained in the Jewish law, but had converted. Uh, either way, Barnabas saw an opportunity. And certainly, I, I think you could uh, make the case that it obviously encouraged and edified both Paul and the brethren in Antioch for Barnabas to bring him there. Uh, then, of course, we see in chapter 12 and into chapter 13 how that the Holy Spirit uh, tells the, the, the elders of the church in Antioch to separate Paul and Barnabas uh, for a purpose of sending them to teach and preach to the gospel, preach, te preach and teach the gospel to the Gentiles, uh, certainly up in, in Asia Minor. And so they do so. We see in Acts 13, we find in verse 46 and 50, for instance, in Acts chapter 13, uh, both Paul and Barnabas were persecuted and were bold despite that persecution and teaching the gospel. They stood for the truth. Uh, they were humble in Acts chapter 14. This is the event where we have individuals who were praising Paul and Barnabas as being gods in the flesh, uh, Zeus and Hermes. Uh, 
And, of course, both Paul and Barnabas, they rend their clothes and they run throughout the multitude. Do not sacrifice to us. We're flesh and blood, just like you. Uh, of course, Acts chapter 15, uh, he and Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas, rather, they, they stand for the truth in the face of Judaizing teachers, or at least individuals who were teaching you must be circumcised before you become a Christian, uh, which is kind of a, it's a, call them Judaizing teachers. Uh, and then in uh, chapter 15, we have perhaps what many of us will, will remember perhaps most vividly is the sharp contention between Paul and Barnabas in verses 35 to 39 over what individual? John Mark. Yeah, that Barnabas wanted to take John Mark to go back through these places. Of course, Paul had already said, let's go back to these uh, churches we established or help establish and let's encourage them and edify, see how they're doing. And uh, there was a situation with John Mark that Paul was unprepared to have John Mark or wasn't willing to have John Mark join them. And uh, Barnabas uh, wanted John Mark with them. Eventually, uh, Paul and uh, Silas, and as I said, went north up through Asia Minor. Barnabas and John Mark end up going to Cyprus. And of course, there may have been, a, I mean, certainly I think John Mark needed the encouragement. And I'm going to give Barnabas the benefit of the doubt on that that uh, he did it primarily for the fact that John Mark needed encouragement, needed a chance to kind of redeem himself, I guess you could say. Uh, and we'll talk more about why John Mark may have left Paul and Barnabas on their trip. But what else do we know about John Mark and his relation to Barnabas? Yeah, yeah. John Mark was Barnabas's nephew or sister's son, according to Colossians 4 and in verse 10. Uh, so there's that information as well. So um, there's a little bit of information as well on uh, Barnabas. This is secular stuff. I'm not going to include a lot of this uh, in, our, in our studies, but I thought this was kind of interesting. A lot, of course, there are a lot of Christians who believe that Barnabas was the writer of Hebrews, um, and, and that could be. You know, that, that is possible, and there are, are a lot of people who believe that he was. Tertullian, uh, he thought that Barnabas was the writer of uh, of Hebrews. And then according to uh, custom or legend, uh, claims that Jews from Syria and Salamis, which is Cyprus, which is where Barnabas is from, uh, claims that they became angry with Barnabas as he taught in Cyprus and was tortured and stoned in 61 AD. Uh, certainly whether or not that's entirely accurate, the fact that Barnabas was willing to die for the faith, I think is absolutely clear from scripture. Uh, and I have, uh, I, I imagine he, like most of the other uh, early teachers of the gospel, including the apostles, likely did or was killed uh, because of the teaching of Christ. All right. Uh, one, in fact, I guess you could say you can make the, the argument the only bad thing or only negative example we have about Barnabas is in Galatians chapter 2, verses 9, well, really Galatians chapter 2, verses 9 on through verse 13 where we have an example of Barnabas, Paul's using Barnabas and Peter, ultimately, as examples of the danger of hypocrisy. And when, apparently, when Gentile brethren would come, uh, Peter and even Barnabas would, or when Jewish brethren would come, Paul and Barnabas would separate themselves from the Gentile brethren and only pay attention and spend time with or uh, show fellowship, I guess you could say, with the Jewish brethren. Uh, and they kind of made a differentiation between the Jewish and Gentile Christians. And of course, Paul, he, he, he makes the uh, statement that he had to withstand Peter to his face because even Barnabas got caught up with it. Uh, and so that, that's saying something. All right. So very quickly before we, uh, we've got about a minute maybe left. Uh, in what ways do the events we observe in Barnabas' life speak to his ability to encourage? What, what are some examples where we kind of see why Barnabas, or why Joseph was nicknamed by the apostles Barnabas, son of encouragement? Yeah, he sought out Paul. Okay, I think that was uh, certainly, I, I think both Paul and the brethren in Antioch uh, were encouraged by that. A relationship that that was created by that process but Barnabas sought Paul out in Tarsus convinced him to come with them down to Antioch and they both taught and preached there for a while uh, and then of course that ended up bringing about the missionary journeys as well yeah that's one example 
Okay. Right. Well, and, you know, and I don't know, I mean, we, we're not told or given a lot of insight into Paul's mindset or attitude during that period of time, but, but that might have been very discouraging had Paul not been welcomed anywhere at any point, despite his proclamation of having converted uh, by baptism and so forth. Uh, you know, that might have, have really kind of hurt Paul a little bit, but Barnabas was willing to stick his neck out and, and help him kind of be accepted and, and convince the brethren there in, in Jerusalem that he was what he said he was. So that's an excellent example. What else? Okay. Yeah, I think I think it's not that Paul was in the wrong, and we'll talk more about that next week. I think they both had legitimate concerns, uh, both for and against taking John Mark with them. Uh, but Barnabas was looking more towards John Mark's state of mind and his attitude, whereas Paul was looking more towards the effectiveness of the teaching effort in the places where they were going. So they just had kind of two different perspectives on emphasis, or emphasis, I guess you could say, on the effort to teach and encourage. And so, yeah, I think Barnabas' example of John Mark being even willing to, to, you know, have this sharp contention with Paul. He didn't just back off and say, okay, Paul, you know, you're, you're in charge here. He, he said, listen, I, I really think John Mark is important, and I think he, is, he needs the chance to redeem himself. He needs this opportunity. Whatever that conversation involved, certainly you'd include that. Acts chapter 4, Barnabas sold land and gave those proceeds to the brethren. So obviously his mind was not on possessions or on wealth. It was on the brethren. Uh, certainly, as Doug mentioned, he believed in Paul. We see in Acts chapter 11, he encouraged the saints in Antioch greatly in verse 23. Uh, fought for John Mark, uh, as we already mentioned. What characteristics about Barnabas should we want to imitate? Let's talk about this one next. Okay. You never know who's going to be willing to hear the gospel. Okay, Paul and Barnabas both were willing to go places and teach people when you know, the, the attitude could easily have been, oh, these, these Gentiles won't listen. They're a bunch of idolatrous people. They're not going to listen about the one true God, yet they tried anyway, and they convinced a great many people. Uh, Barnabas was willing to suffer for the cause of Christ, just as, just as Paul was. What else? Okay, he was very humble, just he and Paul both. You see that in Acts chapter 14. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. He told the truth about himself. He uh, certainly acknowledged uh, the truth of the gospel, and he was willing to share that with, you know, share Paul, like, for instance, Paul's example with the brethren. Yeah, what else? By definition, the very name of Barnabas is an encouragement, okay, son of encouragement, which means that his mindset or his focus was on making sure that he helped brethren. Okay, that was his, this seems to have been his character. His mindset was one that sought to help brethren. Uh, now, the only time, and again, I'm convinced that he didn't mean to, I don't think he even thought about it, or I don't think Peter did either, was in Galatians 2, where he accidentally ended up discouraging brethren by his example. Uh, and I'm, I'm certain that both Peter and Barnabas were heartbroken when they realized what they had done. Nolan? Mom says benevolent. Benevolent. Selfish in the giving. Yeah. Proceeds. Benevolent, being generous, uh, being willing to give of himself, uh, willing to sacrifice of himself for others. Yep. All right. Uh, and then we might pick this one up next Wednesday. How does the sharp dissension among brothers with uh, in Acts 15 between Paul and Barnabas harmonize with passages such as 1 John chapter 3, uh, 1 John chapter 4, 1 Corinthians 1. There's a couple other verses here. I can, well, you have two brothers. Was it wrong for them to disagree on the issue of John Mark? Do we see any in, 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 in indication that there was any sin committed by Paul or Barnabas there? No. Were they both still, did they both still love each other? Paul and Barnabas still love each other as brothers in Christ? Sure. Can you have disagreements and contentions over... This had nothing to do with the gospel itself. It had to do with the, the process by which the gospel was taught, whether John Mark would be an asset or he would be a hindrance 
Uh, and ultimately, I think that you can look at the example of Paul and Barnabas and glean the, uh, the information that ultimately sometimes we, we might disagree. We, we are human beings and we have different thoughts on things uh, as to how to proceed in certain events and so forth. You know, elders sometimes, they have different thoughts about, you know, how best to handle this situation or that situation. And it may have nothing to do with, in terms of, of book, chapter, and verse. It just has everything to do with what's the wisest course of action. Uh, and that's okay to have those, con those sharp contentions at times. As long as we step back and remember we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We love one another. And, you know, at times, if, if we need to, to yield to one another, we need to do so. Ultimately, Paul and Barnabas kind of yielded to each other. Ultimately, they both went their separate ways, not because they hated or were angry, but because, you know, they, Barnabas felt so strongly about this. Paul felt so strongly about it. They said, you know what? How about you take Barnabas and you go to Cyprus? I'll take Silas and I'll go north. And then that way, both sections will be covered that we have been to before and encouraged and edified. All right. Any thoughts or comments through Barnabas? All right. Uh, kind of a quick whirlwind type study. I don't know uh, how y'all feel about it. Y'all can let me know if we want to slow down just a little bit, maybe take two classes per person. We can do that. Uh, but, but hopefully that's something I mean, it's, it's most of this stuff is just going to be on individuals that we don't know a whole lot about. Just very little is, is recorded about them and just some general applications we can take from what we have. All right. All right, everybody. So next week we'll cover John or uh, discuss John Mark. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so we'll have about two minutes or so before, uh, we get started with our, our service.